Well, we're in the jungle now, and my challenge for tonight is to find six stick insects, no matter what the species, and uh, I'll explain a little, a little something about them. So here we have our first stick insect of the night, uh, and this is Marmesoidea species uh, stick insect. Now this is a, an adult male, and you can definitely tell from its rather small, modest size. It's only about as long as my index finger there. I'm going to first start off by talking about their identification. So of course, stick insects, stick and insect. That really just means that it's an insect, you know, it's a it's an invertebrate with six legs uh, that looks kind of like a stick. And usually to identify them, they're kind of just sitting on plants. So anything that really just sits on a plant like this uh, and looks like a stick, most likely it's a stick insect. Now something I also love about the Marmosoidea species stick insects is their red eyes, their bloodshot red eyes. I find that very, very gorgeous. Okay, we have found our second stick insect. Now, this species of stick insect is from the genus Dares, or spelled D-A-R-E-S, Dares. This is a, just a juvenile. He's not even the length of my, under, of my index finger. And what he's doing there is cleaning his face because they are rather cleanly insects. They have a habit of uh, brushing their feet, brushing their face and their antennae, make sure they're clean. What I'm going to explain this time is the characteristics of the stick insects. Now, let's start with the head. The head is usually a rather short, stumpy part of the body. Uh, sometimes with certain species like this one, they can have spikes on top to add for further camouflage and further defense against predators. They also have rather long antennae, which they use to uh, sense smell and changes in air pressure and wind. Now let's move on to the thorax. The thorax is also not particularly very long, just a little bit longer than their head. And again, like certain species, they may have thorns and spikes for further defense. The abdomen is the longest section of the body and probably the most important because it carries a lot of the vital organs. That's where their digestive system is and that's also where their spiracles are uh, just lining along the body but quite a few of them are at the abdomen. Now the spiracles are holes where uh, insects breathe and we can also see that Characteristic of insects, they have jointed legs here. And of course, uh, again, depending on species, their legs, their jointed legs, they may be either moderately sized or moderately long, like this one, or they can be really, really long. A little trick that dares stick insects do is that they also like to play dead. Now these aren't the only stick insects that play dead, there are a couple different genus, just a number of different stick insects that also play dead, but these guys in particular like to play dead. I think these are the only ones that actually play dead here in Borneo Base. So you can see the underside here, you can see that it's stretching out its legs to look like a stick, and of course it's not, it's not moving to just look like a stick or just play dead. You might also be seeing this, this blue stuff underneath here, but I think that might be hemolymph. So I'm guessing that's some solidified hemolymph from a possible prior injury. This is an adult female Marmosoidea species stick insect. Now they are definitely much bigger than their male counterparts. This one is about length of my hand. I don't want to spook her too bad, because she can fly. So let's talk about their diet real quick. So stick insects are obligatory herbivores. So they eat only plants. They specifically eat leaves. Uh, they don't eat the stems, they don't eat the roots, fruits, anything. Just the leaves. They are very strict foliage eaters. And they use their mandibles, that's their mouth part, uh, they use their mandibles to chew on plants just like this and leave marks just like that and they usually like to eat from the tip here 
They'll go row by row by row, just like this. And they particularly like eating early succession plants. Just a quick note as well. Uh, in the pet trade, stick insects are also fairly common. So when people keep them, they are usually quite picky with the species of leaves they eat. But in the pet trade, many of them really like eating mango leaves and mulberry leaves, sometimes even papaya. Started moving away now, so we'll be on our way and try and find our next stick insect. Goodbye. Boop. We have yet another adult female Marmosoidea species stick insect. This one's actually a little bit smaller, even though she's an adult female, but that's okay. Let's talk about their life cycle. So stick insects go through incomplete metamorphosis, which is to say that they start from an egg, like a lot of insects do, and when they hatch, the nymphs look very similar to the adults, and then they just go through a couple molting phases until they grow wings, and when they grow wings, that's when they become adults. Only adult insects will have wings. Whereas any insect that you see that doesn't have wings, that probably means it's just a nymph or a larva. You gonna... Yep, there he goes. There she goes. You've seen it plenty, but here, here's another one. This is another adult female Marmosoidea species stick insect. Let's get into their habitat and origin. Depending on the species again, these guys can live anywhere. They could be in forests or they could even be in deserts. And in terms of forests, they could be in either temperate or very tropical forests, just like here in Borneo Base. Now these guys, because they kind of live where they eat, their habitat usually consists of early succession plants, stuff like these. Uh, hairy little leaves. They'll love to eat these. And they'll also just live among them as well. Uh, stick insects, talking generally, can be found in every continent except Antarctica, of course, because that's too cold for them. But, you know, North America, South America, Africa, Australia, Asia, Europe, they have stick insects of their own species. But typically, the biggest stick insects are found in the tropics. In fact, some of the biggest stick insects are found right here in Malaysia. Looks like our final stick insect is yet another Marmosoidea species stick insect, uh, but this one's an adult male. So to end things off, I guess we're going to talk about their importance to the ecosystem. So first off, let's talk about the role they play. Uh, stick insects are uh, consumers. They are primary consumers. They are herbivorous, of course and they serve as food sources to bigger animals such as reptiles, rodents, birds, and other insects. Now of course as primary consumers they are tasked with eating uh, plants and specifically very early succession plant leaves. And because of this they help to clear out competition for other plants that uh, figure in the later succession process. And then after that, of course, when they poop or when they die, their bodies or their feces will end up as nutrition for these plants that they eat. I wouldn't exactly say I'm very satisfied with tonight. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take you guys on a little herping trip. I'll go around, look for some other bugs that may have some interaction with these stick insects. They may have some interactions or correlations, whether they are, of course, the main predators, or if they interact with uh, these stick insects in a certain way. Let's go. So, this is a little katydid. Now, these katydids, they do interact with stick insects in the fact that they are competitors for food, because these katydids eat these exact same leaves that these stick insects do. So right here, we also have a mating pair of cockroaches. Now these guys also act as a little bit of competition for the stick insects because they too can eat these, these kind of leaves. But they also serve the function of being decomposers. So you know, when the stick insects die or when they poo, you know, these cockroaches, they'll be eating the dead bodies and the poop, of 
course. And then when the cockroaches poop, consequently, that poop will have extra nutrients. And that one flew away. So right here we have a raspy cricket. Now this is just a baby, so he won't really interact with stick insects that much. And as you can see, he's kind of small. But when they are bigger, they could definitely act as pretty significant predators of stick insects. Uh, so as you can see, these guys have spines on their front legs. And these spines are used to snare their prey, make sure they don't escape. And then they'll chew them alive. This tiny little guy is a thorn hopper. Now, thorn hoppers uh, belong to the family Homoptera. So they belong to about the same family as cicadas. And uh, these thorn hoppers, they don't interact with sick insects too much, but they do live in the same habitat, definitely. They don't exactly eat the leaves, so what they do is they actually suck the sap or the juices out of the leaf instead of simply chewing on the leaf. So these guys do that with their rostrum. They pierce into the, into the leaf and then they suck the, they suck the leaf dry. Just another Marmosoidea species stick insect right there. Looks to be an adult male from its small size and the presence of wings. So we'll leave this little guy alone. Here we have a pretty decent sized huntsman spider. That's my hand for comparison. And as you can see, it's kind of shining really nice and purple. This is uh, a female and uh, she's kind of missing one of her legs. As you can see, she's only got seven legs. Uh, these guys could actually eat a stick insect, but probably only a nymph. The really big female stick insects, I don't think they would have the uh, confidence to go after. Another male Marmosoidea. Uh. All I can say is ow, because I stepped on that nest of ants. But they do actually interact with stick insects too. So essentially when the uh, stick insects die, they kind of fall into their into their hands, and these are the guys that will chop them up, eat them up. The stick insects just act as a source of food for them. Well, here's a pretty rare find for the night. This is the Lessena, or the dragon-headed katydid. Now these guys live around the same habitat as uh, the stick insects here. They like these long stemmed plants that are kind of thin, and these guys could actually eat a stick insect as well, as the less enough species of katydids, they are omnivorous, so they'll eat both plants and other insects or other animals. This is just a nymph, actually. Uh, they can actually get much bigger. All right, so I got him on a leaf now. So now you can kind of clearly see his size now. Like I said, these guys could probably eat a, a small baby stick insect if they wanted to. Oh, so I just wanted to show these guys because I love that shape on the head. Those spikes, so cool. And when they're adults, they look metal. This is a little grasshopper that has adapted its camouflage to look rather dead leaf-like. They can be found around the same habitat as the stick insects, and they can also eat the same food and live in the same habitat. So they do act as competitors for stick insects. This is a little baby gecko. Uh, I'm assuming that it is a baby Cerdodactylus pubisulcus, a species of bentoed gecko. Fairly common in Borneo base. Uh, and this is just a little baby. Now, both the adults and the babies will live around the same habitat as stick insects. They do quite like living around early succession plants and their leaves. And as you can see, this one is on the stem of one of the same kind of plants that the stick insects eat. They only interact with stick insects in that they live around the same neighborhood. We'll leave this little guy to uh, go on his own. He's almost at the top of the stem. I don't know what he's gonna do after, but we'll leave him alone. Have a good night. Bye-bye. We got a little frog, a little rough-sided frog. These guys don't interact with stick insects, unfortunately. They're not, or at least not directly, because these guys have a much more different habitat, have a much more different diet, and he's gone. But yeah, they don't interact with stick insects all that often anyway. Oh my god, anything but you! Alright, sweet, we got 
an, finally a third species of stick insect. This is the Haniella species of stick insect. Haniella being the genus name. Let me just quickly try and pick them up. Let me just quickly walk over here and go. All right. Ooh, spiky, spiky. Ooh. All right, there, there he is. This is a male, Haniella echinata, the spiky Haniella stick insect. As you can see, this is a, I think this should be an adult male because they have these little wings here, these little, this little white marking on the wings. They are very spiky. And these are pretty much the largest stick insects you can get around here. Though the females are definitely larger than this male counterpart right here. But it's still a really great find here in Borneo Base. I'm just holding him. As you can see, you know, decently sized. He's large, but definitely not as large as the females. In contrast with the uh, Marmosoidea, these do indeed look kind of like a stick. I'm going to show my hand there again for size reference. I would also consider these to be one of the prettiest stick insects because underneath them they do have uh, these lovely greens and blues between each segment of their abdomen. So as you can see there's like segments between the abdomen through these lines. That's one segment, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight, nine segments there. In between those segments, they have this lovely blue-green coloration, which I'm guessing that they show to predators as defense. Oh my god, there is a snake sleeping on this tree. I'm gonna try and get it. It looks to be a bronze back, and uh, whoo, it's got some mosquitoes feeding on it. So, let's pick it up. There's the snake all the way up there. We're gonna get it. Here we go. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Woo! Oh, oh. Oh, it's peeing all over me. Oh, no. That does appear to be, ooh, an elegant bronze back. Now, ooh. These guys uh, could live in the same habitat as stick insects. These guys eat strictly lizards, lizards and frogs. They don't exactly eat other insects. However, because they eat other frogs and lizards, that actually technically means that they are the predators of the, ooh, the predators of the predators of stick insects. Now this guy's really, he's really trying to give me a, a good old bite, but I won't let that happen. And I'm gonna try and keep this meeting brief. Whoop! And release them soon. He's gorgeous. Look at that coloration. Now, like I said, this is a bronze-backed snake. The common name, actually, in Malay is the Ular Lidi. And uh, bronze-backs are strictly arboreal. So, not only are they the predators of the predators, but they do live in the exact same habitats as certain stick insects. Uh, for example, they might live in the same habitat as the Haniella species of stick insects, maybe even the dares that we met earlier. But for something like the Marmosoidea species stick insects, which live on mostly early succession plants that don't grow very high, you might not really be able to see these guys in the same habitat. Beautiful snake. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. I think this will be the final animal of the night. I'm gonna take some quick pictures and uh, let it go. Little face. I think I've photographed this snake 
until it's gotten sick of me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release this little one and we'll end the video for tonight. Bye. Slithering down. Bronze back has been released. Let's go back to my room. Well, uh, I'm back in my room. Uh, thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot about stick insects and have a good day.